Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark and Alice and myself, we want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather once again to spend time in his word, that we might see him more clearly, that we might be more like him, that we might bring glory to the Father through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing on in our study uh, in search of Christianity, examining ourselves, Mm -hmm. looking, as Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. So we're looking at the fruit in our own lives. That's, That's one of the issues here. And last week we talked about faith and faithfulness, yes. which brings us to the next fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is either, depending on your translation, gentleness or meekness. Yes. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Brother Mark if you'll just ask God's blessing on our time together. Oh Lord, we just thank you that we do have the ability to come together to yes. study your word, Lord. You, and just be with us now to get out what you need us to get out and Spread it forth. Amen. 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 So, as I said, we're going to talk about, we talk, I understand, we've talked about this being, the fruit of the Holy Spirit being a chain. Yes. That moves, not, not, not necessarily downwards, but it's a link leading from one to another. Mm-hmm. And we talked about faith last week, and that does lead to gentleness. Because without faith in God and understanding his faithfulness to us, you'd never be able to do this. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Belongs to him. Well, and it would be impossible for us to bring it forth on our own. Okay. So it's all in God's plan. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. And and not to get sidetracked as I tend to do. But... I have to be a little bit passionate. I am a little bit passionate about translations. Um, so I use, the new, I use the King James primarily, the King James and the New American Standard. And it's interesting here <coughs> that while in the New American Standard it's gentleness, mm-hmm. in the King James it's meekness. And that same thing is true in the Beatitudes. Right. That's where right. it says, you know, blessed are the, the meek, blessed are the gentle, mm-hmm. both those translations. Now, the distinction between the words, and words are important, okay? Very important. Yeah. The distinction between the words gentle and meek, it, it seems to kind of fade in our modern usage of those words. And it's commonly accepted that they're synonymous, that they can be exchanged, they can be used one in place of the other, mm-hmm. right? They're, they're basically in common use, the same thing. Mm-hmm. But though there appears to be little difference between the two words, I thought that it's interesting, if you're familiar with W.E. Vine, uh, he, he's done the expository dictionary of the New Testament, the Greek words in the New Testament, among other commentaries that he's written. And I, I guess that goes back quite some time, yeah. Um, but he talks about the fact, and I, I think this is a good point, that there's a subtle difference, so to speak, between meekness and gentleness, in as much as that meekness is kind of an attitude where gentleness is kind of an action. Mm. Okay? Right, right. So I just want to, you know, pop that out there. But I, I, think it's, I, I think it's an important thing. Because in our world today, meek is considered basically a negative thing. Exactly. I was okay? Just, I was just going to say that, yeah. But right. it's definitely not... Gentle is kind of okay. But meek is, is typically, in our culture today, mm-hmm. <clears throat> particularly here in the West, that's not, that's not a good thing to be considered. You know, if somebody calls you meek, they're not complimenting you, yeah. okay? Um, I w- was listening to another pastor give a sermon on this, and he defined meek as s- consider one of the horses in the uh, over in Britain where the... Guards ride to protect the queen. Mm. These are big animals. They are conditioned and trained to not go wild. And he said meekness is power under control. And that always stuck with me. I don't know if that's accurate. But here's this great big animal. He's gentle. He's trained to be that way. But in a split second, he, he, he can 
be, you know, the guy out that's writing them can, can pull and get him to do things if need to be done. Oh, I understand what you're saying. I, that's not, not a bad point. Mm. The, the, the thing that concerns me about that at all, and I, I don't even know this is a valid concern, is the fact that I don't think typically of, of a horse having an, an attitude. attitude of weakness. Yes, yeah. I mean, basically, they're broken. Right. Okay. That's what they uh, do. They, they don't. They're, they're not of nature. And of course, we're not of nature meek either. But right. you know, horses before After they can be broken, ridden, yeah. and certainly in those, and we we have had the opportunity to see those in London on a few occasions. Yeah. They they are broken in the sense that they are totally under the control of the rider. Like high spirited. Okay. Yeah. So I I don't know if you would attribute meekness to them, but I understand, I understand the point. Okay. Um, in that sense, if you use that analogy, if we're going to have the fruit of the Spirit working in us, we need to be broken also. Yes. And we need to be under the control of another. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so so from that perspective, that's not a, not a bad analogy. So it is just kind of keep that in the back of the mind as, as we go along, right? All right, but, but what I was saying is, and I don't think you would think in that analogy so much like this, like I said, we think of a meek person as a weak person. person. I was just going to say that it's okay. weakness is a, yeah. is a is attributed to a person to a, who's, meek. who's meek. Okay, so I, I don't know, you know, I, I and it's definitely a meek person is not weak. Well, when it's the whole no, fruit of the Holy it, Spirit. operating in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right. being meek doesn't make you weak. Con quite the contrary, right. and we'll look at that, right? So, if ever there was a meek person. If ever there was a meek person that walked the face of this earth, who was at the same time the greatest power on earth, Amen. it was Jesus. Amen. So listen for a moment to the words of the Prince of Peace. <laughs> In Matthew 11, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, King James says meek, I am meek and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? So here's Jesus saying that he was, and he's the truth, right? Yes, he is. He is the picture of meekness or humility or gentleness. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, whoever Such walked the face power. of the earth with the power that he did, right? right? But it, it says, it's, this is important. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We have been given, this is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, where we need to learn how to walk in that gentleness. We need to learn how to, to live that gentle spirit, that meek spirit, right? Mm -hmm. God told the prophet Jeremiah to speak to his people, commanding them. He said, do not learn the ways of the heathen, the unbelievers. That's goy, and, and, or that, that's the unsaved, the unrighteous, right? Jesus said, learn from me. So clearly, those are two educational sources defined by the Bible. You're either, and we talk about this a lot, you're either learning from the Word, and praise God, that's why we're doing this, so we all grow in that, or you're learning from the world. That's all there is, okay? Don't ever get so unhumble that you think, you know, that you're self-educating, right. okay? Right. We came into this world ignorant, Knowing nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you came out, what did you know? Nothing. Nothing. I know nothing. As we grow, we gain knowledge. And we gain that from many, many different places, right, as we pass through the world. But true understanding and wisdom come only from being born again and learning from the Word. Mm -hmm. so, listen to this, uh, John 8, 31, right? So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, then you're truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The alternative is to learn from the world, which John says in 1 John 5, 19, is in the power of the evil one. And that evil one is by nature a liar and the father of lies. So that will give you wisdom. Earthly, natural, and demonic. That's exactly what James says. He says this wisdom is talking about that that comes from, the, from Satan, is not that which comes down from above, but is, as Mark just said, earthly, natural, and demonic. James 3.15. Mm -hmm. So just, just remember, 
as we talk about education, this one little bit of history. And remember, don't lose sight of the fact that that word that we're studying is history. His story. Well, it's his story, mm -hmm. and it's history. Right. So shame on all of you people in the public education system who are teaching history without ever telling his story. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's between you and him. Deal with it. It says in John chapter 7, I'm going to start reading at verse 14. But when it was now in the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished, saying, How has this man become learned, having never been educated? So Jesus answered them and said, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. John seven fourteen to 16. That's where education comes from. It's from the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, you can get it. You can. You should know that what's you know things like math and English and all those things you learn, but they're always filtered through the Spirit, mm. because the things of God are spiritually appraised. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and we are to appraise all things spiritually. Okay. So if Jesus, they they were astounded by his his knowledge, his, his wisdom, because he wasn't trained up as a rabbi. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't study under the rabbis, okay? Um, where do you go to school? Where, where do you get your learning? The answer had better be the Holy from the Holy Spirit, because it was the Holy Spirit who was sent to lead us Thank into you. all truth. truth. Amen. If you're not hearing from the Holy Spirit, there's a grand possibility you are learning a lie. And by the way, a half a truth can be a whole lie. Mm -hmm. So you can learn things that appear true, but if, it does, if it's not complete with the Word of God, the wisdom of God, the understanding that comes from the Word of God, that, that truth that you know can be a lie. The unfortunate fact is that the religious leaders of the Jews and many Christian teachers uh, after them, have chosen to educate people in the world's ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a fact. Oftentimes, the curriculum that comes dressed in religious robes is called tradition. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus said to a group of Pharisees and scribes, who were the teachers and preachers of their day, he said, you hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Matthew 15, 7 through 9. Right? Yes. How do you, how do you distinguish? Mm. The Holy Spirit. Spirit. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. The Sermon on the Mount, that's, I'm going to, talking about the one recorded in the Gospel of Matthew from chapter 5 to verse, chapter 7, that's Jesus' initial teaching. teaching to his disciples, his apostles, mm -hmm. preparing them. That was the foundation. Absolutely. Preparing them for their place in the world as his ambassadors mm -hmm. by training them in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's what, what Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, where he says, all scripture is God-breathed and profitable to, for teaching. It's profitable. It'll train you in righteousness. Yes, you are made righteous by the atoning work of Jesus Christ. You need to learn to live that righteousness mm -hmm. by being trained by the Word, okay? Educated by the Word. You have to be unwrapped. Unwrapped. That's exactly, absolutely right. And we'll refer to that probably somewhere along the line, okay? So, in the very first seconds of that teaching, the Sermon on the Mount, mm -hmm. a teaching that stood in such stark contrast to what they had been taught. Right. The one who is the way, the truth, and the life said to his disciples, blessed are the gentle, yes. for they shall inherit the earth. Or, blessed are the meek. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 5. So, this then has to become the character of a gentleman, of a saint, of the redeemed of the Lord. Throughout the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, you heard, you know, Jesus, and I'll give you one example. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. Mm -hmm. 
you know what? You'll still hear the same thing. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth. In, in so many churches on Sundays, uh, Jesus is saying, that's what you've heard it said, but I'm saying to you now. You have, you have to come. If you're, going to, if you're going to be my ambassador, if you're going to go out and bring my love, my peace, my word to people, you had better understand the meekness, the gentleness that the Lord requires, even to the extent somebody slaps you on one cheek, turn the other also. And then he said, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. Well, this is, an, I'll tell you what, Christians don't want to hear this today. They just don't want to hear it. Well, if you don't want to hear it, talk to Jesus about it. And, I mean, you can, you can reach right over now and turn me off. That's between you and the Lord. It's not between you and me. The fact of the matter is, this is the Word of God, and you're responsible for the Word of God. It takes strength. Ah, it takes it takes power. And that's and this is why you know we're doing another study at a different time on the Book of Acts, talking about Jesus saying, "Don't saying to these very same disciples, mm -hmm. these apostles who were trained by him in the Sermon on the Mount." And after his resurrection, but before his ascension, he is saying, I don't want you to leave Jerusalem. Don't you leave Jerusalem until That's right. power has come upon you. And then you should go out into all the world. You have to have the power of God at work in your life to be able to live this meekness, this gentleness. You can't do this on your own. It's impossible. Your human nature rails so against, against this. Yeah. So, contrast the teachings of the traditions and the teachings of the word, the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. In Matthew 7, Jesus said, in everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you. For this is the law and the prophets. You can't tell me that you know the word of God and you don't know the law and the prophets. And what is that? To love others. Didn't Jesus say to his disciples, he said, a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, right? The Apostle Paul, he got the message. I tell you, he got the message. And he passed it along. Think about what he taught the, 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 the Romans, right? In Romans chapter 12, Paul wrote, never. Do you all know what never means? Yes. Okay, good. Never. We, would have, we could have Bible studies all, all Just for... On on, 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 well, we, we'll do the first... We'll do the first day and a half on all and do the second on never. Okay, okay. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Under no circumstances. Under no circumstances. To anyone. Never take your own revenge. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Go read Romans 12. I'm not making this stuff up. That is supposed to be our new nature, the attitude of the new man, all right? The new creation. Think about what Paul wrote to Colossians. In Colossians chapter 3, he says, But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, abusive speech from your mouth, do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self, who is being renewed to a true knowledge, according to the image of the one who created him. Amen. Colossians 3, 8 through 10, all right? This is, this is the command of God. And by the way, these are not suggestions. Never, never. And Jesus said, there's one thing that will judge you at the end time, and that's going to be the words that he spoke. And you want to know something? There's, there's none who has written words that were not spoken of God, Okay. They're not suggestions, right. but they are, they and, are, and they these, are commandments that right. you can choose to either obey or disobey. Or disobey, and uh, you will you will reap either you'll <laughs> reap the fruit oh of your choices. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so but I was going to say, think about you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul. Oh, these are men moved by the Holy Spirit, spoke from God. Mm -hmm. They're not making this up either. No, no. I mean there are there are people out there obscenely uh, unknowledgeable, who would have you believe that Paul invented Christianity? Mm -hmm. 
because so much of what we know as Christianity is based on his writings. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, so much of what we, know, what we call Christianity is based on his writings, because everything he wrote was based on what he had heard of Jesus. That's right. Okay. Let me just go back for a moment to the old man, all right? The fallen human nature. Right. Outside of the lost paradise, when Adam sinned and he and the woman were kicked out of the garden, right? Mm-hmm. Cain, the first thing you see is Cain became angry. Yes. And I don't believe he was angry at Abel. I believe he was angry at God. Because mm-hmm. God chose. But when, when you have a problem with God, you're going to have a problem with everybody around you, okay? Mm-hmm. And then he takes out that anger on his brother and murders him. Mm-hmm. And so it starts until the time of Noah. Mm. I mean, this is human history. Did they teach you this in school? If they didn't, they were lying to you. You can lie by omission. Yes. The time of Noah. This is what it says in Genesis 6. I'm reading 11, 12, and 13. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God. And the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. The earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. You know, instead of the last days, it's going to be like the times of Noah. Mm. Yes, that was a time when the, the earth was filled with violence. Now, you know what? There's been wars and rumors of wars all through mankind's history. But if you think that it's not on the increase, oh, that, that the violence is going up as the Spirit of God is going down, being not received. Yeah. You know, the only, thing, the only thing that keeps us from pure violence and pure evil in the world today, and this is... This is what Paul it's wrote to the Thessalonians. Yeah. He said, you know what restrains him, talking about the evil one. Mm-hmm. When he's removed, when, when what restrains him is removed, I'll tell you what, you don't want to be on this planet because it will mm-hmm. literally be the equivalent of hell on earth. Well, those disciples and followers of Jesus Christ won't be here when the Holy Hallelujah. Spirit... Hallelujah. One, <laughs> one of the things that come to mind as you're talking about that is Take a pressure cooker, and they, they make it so you can't do this. But just imagine this. But it's, you would think it's of... cooking along, and you undo it so the top pops off, and the water will just kind of boil over. And that's what's going to happen. It would explode. Well, if, if it wasn't for that top, that stuff, yeah. that water would just boil out. Well, I want to tell you that the pressure is increasing, moment by moment yes, by is. moment. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, and there was a news article we, a few weeks ago before we filmed this, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, who was, yeah. who was, I was going to say, the emperor. He, well, he, he was pretty much the emperor of the Soviet Union before the Soviet Union collapsed into its different parts. And he said just the other day... It was in Time magazine, right? It was in Time magazine. He said that he sees this world right now preparing for war. The world is preparing for war. He said the world war. is preparing for war. Well, And he mentioned you know, the three nations, right? America, Russia, and China. Mm-hmm. So, But I don't think you have to be a spiritual prophet. To know that. To be able to look and see what's going on. I mean, Unless you're an ostrich and have your head in the sand. A lot of that going around, I'll tell you what. Think about this. This is spoken of the king of Tyre, who is referring to Lucifer himself, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, it says in Ezekiel 28, By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence, mm-hmm. and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as profane from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. I have to tell you that this world that we're in is so filled with violence. And the unfortunate part is that the church has become so conditioned to become accepting of violence. Okay? That didn't start, that didn't start yesterday. Institutional Christianity was fully birthed in the time of uh, the Roman Emperor Constantine back in the early 300s, right? And he declared that God had spoken to him 
at the Milvian Bridge, this is in 312 AD, right? Mm-hmm. Telling him that he would kill and conquer in the sign of the cross, mm-hmm. the Latin cross, the, the Chori, Chiri, Chiro. <laughs> to think that God would want people to kill and murder in the name of, in the, under the sign of the cross. That has to be one of the greatest contradictions in human history. Mm. Because the cross, the word of the cross, which is the power of God under salvation, that is the perfect example of love. Of, of, of all of this, mm. of love, of, peace. of joy. joy. Jesus went to the cross for the joy set before him. For the peace, he had peace as he stood before us, Pontius Pilate. I mean, all of the fruit of the Spirit is on the cross. Is on the cross. Mm. This is Jesus who said, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And here you have Emperor Constantine saying, well, well let's go get him. Let's kill. So he could be raised in this contest that was going on as who would be the, be, be the, the ruler of Rome after the death of the, the prior Emperor Caesar. Right? You know, it's another horrific thought is the fact that kids today are being really nurtured in violence through all the games that they play, through the music they listen to. Everything. Everything. The way they dress. The video games. Everything. You you are, we are so surrounded. I mean, even subtly, just the fact, anytime you turn on the news, you're going to see violence, violence, violence. violence. It's become, we're becoming inured to it. We're becoming... So you become numb to it. Become numb to it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we really need to be totally on guard in, Absolutely. in this day and age. Right. Because, I mean, think about these words that we're reading. This is the call of God is for us to be loving, to be meek, to be mild, to be gentle. gentle. Be um, one, one interesting thing, when movies first came out, they were very, very, very short. And there was a, a great train robbery, and uh, the when the film was shown, uh, people fainted, men fainted, and by today's standards, it well, was it's just, it's laughable. Nothing, it's nothing compared yeah, to no, today. Yeah. Yeah. So we are getting immune to it. We are absolutely, and that is the conditioning of the world, mm-hmm. because what the world wants. It wants that violence. Yes. Because it's in the power of the evil one who is a lover of violence. Crazy. But we'll talk about that more, but not now. Okay. Because once again, our time oh, has come <laughs> to an end. How Run fast out. it goes. How, how fast it does go, <laughs> honestly. Praise God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your love that you've poured into our hearts through your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you've given us the power. Jesus gave us power and authority that we could live and walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit your operation, your work in our lives, that we might bring the message of love, the message of the cross. So we praise you and thank you for that. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So until our next time, when we get together, and we'll continue on in this, may God bless you and use you for the glory of his name. Amen. God bless you and goodbye. Bye. I will cling to that old